Hello, welcome to the EPG Parshala program in linguistics. I am Pramod Pandey, Professor, Center for Linguistics, Jawaharlal Nehru University. I am the principal investigator of this project. We are now going to listen to the discussion of a module from the course Introduction to Pragmatics and Discourse Analysis. The coordinators of this course are Professor Imtiaz Asnan, Department of Linguistics, Aligarh Muslim University, Aligarh, and Professor Aznish Aroda, English and Foreign Languages University, Lucknow campus. The title of the module is Cross-Cultural and Intercultural Pragmatics. And the author of the module is Dr. Kalyani Samantre, Associate Professor, PG Department of English, Utkal University, Bhubaneswar, Orissa. Listen to the discussion. This module will deal with the notions of cross-cultural and intercultural pragmatics, their functions in the domains of communication, the important research related to the concepts and their present state of validity. Cross-cultural and intercultural pragmatics focus on the relationship between communication and culture in different ways. Um, that is identifying formulation of individuals in one's own culture and across other cultures and how individuals use language influenced by their own culture and other cultures. Cross-cultural and intercultural communications are overlapping concepts and have become immensely important in the 21st century as communities interact closely with each other more than ever for a number of requirements. Studying their pragmatics is an important strategy in our preparation for global interaction. Before we get started, let's understand the concepts of uh, culture and pragmatics. Before we get started, let's understand the concepts of culture and pragmatics. Culture is a knowledge and social behavior of a particular community defined by the community's language, religion, uh, cuisine, social habits, music, arts and other, such other concepts. By being born into a society, an individual imbibes its culture through its customs and social behavior. As a result, one's identity becomes closely integrated with one's culture and that culture becomes an individual's history and background. For example, um, Indians have typical food habits that do not match with the food habits of Western culture. People come across other cultures through um, travel, marriage, education or business which then influence and modify their original ideas, customs and social behavior. For example, um, an Indian student studying in an American university understands American food habits and may gradually modify his or her Indian food habits to some extent. Modifications also happen in the use of language, clothing and so on. Culture is a shared set of values and uh, language is influenced by culture at all levels and we consider cultural implications mostly unconsciously when we communicate. For example, um, in the English speaking countries, the polite culture makes people use uh, the words thank you and sorry several times every day. Pragmatics is a branch of linguistics that uh, studies language use in social contexts. That is to say, uh, how people produce and understand meanings through language in different contexts. Language production happens through the use of words and sentences. When words and sentences are placed in real social situation, their meaning goes beyond the literal meaning to the level of implied meaning. Let's look at an example. Um, so imagine there's this woman sitting in a bedroom with her baby and uh, her husband is standing somewhere next to her, maybe in another room, maybe in the next room. And then suddenly the doorbell rings and the woman says out loud, 
the doorbell i am with the baby so she does not say a complete sentence all she says is is a fragment of words she just says the doorbell i am with the baby so upon hearing this the man walks towards the door to open it now what happens is the listener that is her husband the man in this case understands the speaker's meaning to open the door although the speaker has not mentioned it explicitly so therefore it is uh, pretty much clear that pragmatics focuses on uh, the context of the utterance the meanings possible in the context the negotiation of meaning between the speaker and the listener all these pragmatic issues of communication are tempered by cultural perspectives in which people interact with each other using language cross cultural and intercultural pragmatics focus on the use of language across different cultural context cross cultural pragmatics deals with comparing and contrasting two or more cultures and their use of languages when we travel to other countries we immediately realize the differences in culture and the differences in the use of language similarly cross cultural pragmatics is a study of these differences in the real life use of language in common uh, context by language users from different cultural and linguistic backgrounds it is complemented by intercultural uh, pragmatics intercultural pragmatics studies what happens when two or more culturally different groups come together interact and ne- negotiate commu- to communicate for example if uh, i'm working in japan i'll realize our cultural differences yet i'll communicate with the japanese people in their culturally accepted manner so here two different cultures mm-hmm. are interacting and uh people from two different cultures are negotiating to communicate both cross cultural and intercultural pragmatics explore important aspects of culture and how language is used when different cultures come in contact with each other cross and intercultural pragmatics are relatively new fields of research concerned with um, how the language system is put to use in social encounters between human beings who have different first languages and come from different cultures but communicate in a common language in modern societies all over the world the nature of commerce diplomacy and personal relationships have become increasingly cross and intercultural people in mixed cultural context may find the communication means to live together and thrive on diversity only through pragmatism research in these areas began in the 1920s and developed in the 1980s into a serious study of language and culture the emergence of pragmatics is strongly associated with such early scholars um such as uh, john austin and later with john searle gumpers delheims and many others we will now look at the contributions of each of these scholars first let's look at john austin austin observed that uh, there are many uses of language which seem to state facts but the real meanings may be quite different for example utterances like i hate you or i quit may not be used to make factual statements the sentence i hate you might be an emphatic statement of love thus language is not merely a grammatical system of representation but is a system of devices uh, for engaging in various sorts of social activity the meaning of an utterance is its use in socio cultural pragmatics Austin categorized the utterance into speech acts of uh, promising ordering greeting warning inviting and congratulating and so on next we we'll look at the contributions of john sol developing on austin's theories sol discusses the term background 
Background is a set of abilities, tendencies and outlooks that humans have and how the background helps people understand utterances. Thus, when someone asks us to uh, cut the cake, we know how to, we know it is, you know, we should be using a knife to cut the cake. Similarly, when someone asks us to cut the grass, we know to use a lawn mower. The actual request neither include these details nor directly state that the cutting used in the utterances are different types of actions. However, a, a listener's background helps in un accessing the meanings in these indirect speech acts. The, uh, also, uh, the utterance, can you pass the salt, is another example of indirect speech act, which does not have question function, although it is structured as a question. So here the listener understands this as a request and not a question. Knowing when, where and with whom to use direct and indirect speech acts is very important in cross and intercultural communication because in some cultures people are more direct while in some they are more indirect. Moving on to Gumpers, the focus into culture, cross cultural pragmatics got enriched by the research done by Gumpers, Heinz and many others who followed. Gumpers draws our attention to the nature of cultural phenomena in speech. According to him, culture is at the core of speech situations as it is composed of values and norms. What can be observed and analyzed in cross-cultural communication are different conventions of communication, different speech style and narrative patterns. For example, um, in England when people meet anyone younger or older they say good morning or good evening to each other as a mark of cordiality in india if we meet an elder we we say first uh, namaste namaskar or namaskaram as a mark of respect and it is not expected of the elders to first say uh, namaste namaskar or namaskaram these differences are distinctions in culture he also discusses how people identify themselves or others on the basis of speech styles employed. Other factors uh, such as the speech context and the identity the speaker wants to create for herself also play major roles in uh, cross and intercultural pragmatics. For example, uh, a speech becomes formal when a scientist presents a lecture on solar, solar energy to government officials but informal when the same scientist discusses the uses of solar energy with village people. In the first instance, the speaker would create the identity of a knowledge giver, while in the second instance, that of a friend. Now we we'll look at the contributions of Del Himes. Himes points out in his research the issues of cultural diversity and inequality. He concludes that uh, we no longer live in a neat world in which every person has only one language and belongs to one culture. We also never use a language. We always use a variety of a language, a speech style, a dialect or a type of interaction. For example, um, people in Hindi speaking areas use such dialects as uh, Haryanvi, Avadhi, Braj Bhasha, Magadhi, Maithili, Bhojpuri, Ankika and so on. However, uh, one dialect, dialect uh, from all these dialects becomes the language of power. In English, um, as also in every other language, the same situation is uh, prevalent. The power dialect is socio-culturally determined. Himes also discusses the inequality of language varieties as a fact of life. It is a central aspect of sociolinguistic dynamics which makes one dialect or one language more powerful and prestigious than others used in the same language community. For example, all over the world, uh, English is considered to be the language of opportunity and prestige. Between the 11th and the 14th century, English was considered to be the language of the illiterates, the peasants, and of similar working class. So 
in intercultural or cross cultural communication now not being able to speak good english is generally equated with poor education and sometimes with a um, lower social status Himes points uh, points out that use of the prestige or the power variety of language is valued highly in literate nar narratives and in contexts where uh, serious talk is expected, as in um, uh, an academic lecture or uh, giving a talk in the media. People using the non-prestige varieties of the same language are denied access to the category of expert voices and are termed uh, lay persons. Recent researchers study all observable language behavior in cross and intercultural contexts. These researchers do not overstress cultural differences, but they try to understand how such differences often generate stress and anxiety in language use. Researchers now deal with the pluralistic nature of societies. Uh, they do not present other cultures as something strange, weird or unusual. They also try to understand the patterns and problems in uh, cross-cultural and intercultural communication by analyzing concrete communicative events. The way culture impacts language use is studied as a reality where people of different cultures meet for various reasons that is uh, business, education, travel, sports and so on. Through social interactions using languages, they interpret, construct and negotiate meaning. For example, in the Olympic village, sports persons from all over the world congregate. They have different cultures and languages and they are in fierce competition with others. Yet they interact with each other to create a positive social life uh, during the games. Many recent analyses of cross-cultural communication demonstrate that culture need not be traditional. It need not be seen as something which is deposited in every member of a particular society. It can be made, changed, manipulated and dropped on the spot. In the present time, culture serves as a joint and a shareable set of resources, part of which is operated automatically and part of which operates strategically. Now we'll try to understand various mindsets in, uh, in cross-cultural and intercultural contexts. We have uh, ethnocentric orientation, polycentric orientation and geocentric orientation. Ethnocentric orientation arises from a mindset where we use our own culture as a standard for judging other cultures. For example, uh, some Indian li Indians living abroad critique the Western culture from the perspective of the Indian culture and making judgments on the first. Next, we have polycentric orientation. Many people living abroad are attracted by everything in the host country culture. They develop a greater affinity towards the culture of the host country in comparison to one's own. So this is actually the opposite of ethnocentric orientation. In ethnocentric, you consider your culture as superior and the other culture as inferior to yours. But in the case of polycentric orientation, um, you consider the other culture as superior and you just uh, accept it and have a greater affinity towards that culture. Next, we have geocentric orientation. This orientation presents a global mindset where communication is conducted, understanding the values of one's own society and those of the host country without value judgments. In mixed cultural setups, miscommunication at certain points is inevitable. Miscommunication occurs uh, especially when there are significant cultural differences between communicators and communities in their languages, habits, values, uh, ways of relating to others and so on. For example, uh, North Americans tend to be frank and explicit, quickly getting to the point, whereas the Japanese tend not to be straightforward as this is considered impolite in the Japanese culture. For example, 
A Japanese travel agent kept on persuading an American businessman to take a train to a certain city in Japan. The American kept insisting that he would like to take a flight. While the Japanese could not understand why the American not get the point that there was no flight to that city, the American felt frustrated why the Japanese travel agent not book her a flight ticket. So this is what happens uh, when uh, people in, who belong to two different cultures uh, try to interact. And this is one sort of miscommunication that could happen. Similarly, miscommunication may lead to conflict or aggravate conflict that uh, already exists. However, in business situations, education, diplomacy, etc., people from different cultures negotiate and understand meanings through the use of language. They try to understand the variations in culture so that living and dealing with others can be meaningful. It becomes now a necessity to learn about and understand other cultures and how culture determines the language behavior of a community. There are certain points to be careful about while interacting with people from other cultures. Uh, we'll now discuss these points. Uh, first one uh, is uh, choosing the appropriate topic in conversation. While the British do not want to discuss their family with strangers, the Americans are quite open in that respect. If they do not understand this, the British may find the American intruding into his privacy and the American may understand the British not friendly and frank. So, choosing the appropriate topic, understanding each other's culture is very relevant. Another important uh, problem is opening and closing conversation. Now, depending on each culture, this may vary how a person uh, begin the conversation and how they end the conversation may vary depending on the culture. Taking turns during conversation is another important factor. In polite society, people do not interrupt the speaker till she or he finishes what they wanted to say. Listening attentively to a speaker is a minimum requirement before one starts to speak. And this, um, is, this stands true for all cultures. It is always uh, respectful to listen to, to the speaker and wait for your chance to reply or answer or question back. Next is interruption. Unless absolutely essential, interrupting a speaker is considered rude in most cultures. If one needs to interrupt at all, this is done by seeking speaker's permission. For example, you can ask, uh, may I interrupt? And then you can um, state your uh, observation or you can answer or you can question. Next is use of silence. In some cultures, silence is a mode of communication. For example, in many African and Indian communities, when elders speak, juniors keep silent, which states that they have understood and are, an agree are in agreement with what was said. On the contrary, in Western societies, extended silence of the listener can cause strain on the speaker. Another important point is uh, knowing how much to say. In some cultures, people are used to speak a lot without any care for the other's point of view. This is tolerated in some society, but not in many contexts. So it's very important to know how much to say and to follow other rules such as uh, taking turns, keeping silent when necessary, not interpreting, uh, interrupting uh, the speaker or um, to know the correct way of opening or closing the conversation. If we look at communication as a process of coding and decoding of messages, it is obvious that there are many points in the process where communication can break down. In particular, uh, successful communication depends crucially on shared background and shared culture. A language user needs to use the language not only correctly, 
but also appropriately that is uh, they should not be only using the language uh, based on linguistic competence but also um, based on communicative competence in fact we have to use the four components of communicative competence that is linguistic social linguistic discourse and strategic competence to be effective in cross cultural and intercultural contexts now um, linguistic competence is a knowledge of the language code that is uh, its grammar and vocabulary the grammar component includes a knowledge of pronunciation and phonology morphology syntax and semantics uh, whereas vocabulary helps a person in being fluent similarly social linguistic competence is another necessary factor it is the knowledge of socio cultural rules of language use that is uh, knowing how to use and respond to language appropriately appropriateness um, uh, appropriateness it depends on uh, the setting of communication the topic the cultural backgrounds and the relationships among the people communicating moreover being appropriate depends on knowing the norms and taboos of other culture uh the politeness in this is how a specific attitude is expressed for example how uh how should you speak to a person with authority or to a friend or how to express sarcasm courtesy or irony etc next is discourse competence this is the knowledge of how to produce and understand oral or written text and being cohesive in creating text whereas uh, strategic competence is the ability to start continue and complete a conversation in a proper manner this competence also helps to understand problems in communication and how to repair communication breakdowns before uh, before during or after they occur another important thing uh, to know is that uh, when the communication is between uh, people of different cultures even if they share a common language thing um, things can go wrong knowledge of a language does not automatically provide the cultural background to successfully communicate in that language like a native speaker can so differences in culture affect communication in many ways for example um, members of certain cultures are much more likely to use indirection than members of certain other cultures let's say the japanese are famous for being indirect in speech while americans are eminent for being direct because americans are not used to the level of indirection that japanese use they sometimes completely misunderstand what is being said currently the researchers of cross cultural and intercultural studies are investigating more into the ways in which people from different cultures understand or misunderstand each other and how they adapt to other cultures they also research the process of communication that develop intercultural sensitivity and diminish bias and antagonism against other cultures courses in uh, cross cultural and intercultural pragmatics use increasingly sophisticated techniques for addressing the practical concerns of uh, teaching media business travel and social service cross cultural and intercultural competence bestows uh, on us the ability to live and work in another culture without too much discomfort these abilities improve our communication with other people in a respectful and trustworthy manner thank you summary this module continues the discussion of cross cultural and intercultural pragmatics research in this area focuses on the processes of communication that develop intercultural sensitivity and diminish bias and antagonism against other cultures These explorations help people to expand their cultural dimensions. Courses in cross-cultural and intercultural pragmatics use increasingly sophisticated techniques for addressing the practical concerns of media, business, travel, social service, and 
education. Thank you.